Hi, this is Eli Kranzberg from Logic Pro Expert. My buddy Chris and I are collaborating on a couple of posts. We each decided to show our three favorite most used features in Logic 10.4.8. Now, thinking about it, you know, it's hard to narrow it down to three features and what are unique in Logic that aren't sort of generic good features that you'd use in any DAW. And I've come up with three that I use so insidiously. They're just at my fingertips. I don't even think about them. They're just always there. Two of them kind of work together hand in hand, at least the way I use them, although they can be used separately. And the third one is one on its own, and that's what I'm going to start with. Now, here I've got an empty project with just a generic audio channel strip and an instrument channel strip, and they have the default setups. This is just an I.O. name that I've named in my I.O. labels. But I like having my channel strips called up with some default routing setup that I always use. So I'm going to show you how I do that. To start with, this is audio. I like outputting to a bus. I use a master bus, and I've named it in my I.O. routing. It's called master bus. I use bus 64. And I like to have a couple of sends set up. I have one set up to go to reverb. And this is just sort of a comfort reverb. I don't use it necessarily in the mix, although I end up using it sometimes. But it's there in case I want to just dial in some reverb quickly. I use bus 8 for that. And then I have a couple of sends to my two headphone buses. And I want to snap those to Unity by option clicking, so they mirror the level of my fader when I'm in post-fader mode. So this is kind of a generic starting point that I like having for an audio channel strip. Reverb send with nothing dialed in, and my headphones set at default to Unity. And maybe I'll add in an EQ. Nothing set in it, but just have it there ready to go. Just have it there in case I want to use it. So now I'm going to hit Y to open my library, and I'm going to save this as a patch. And it's automatically defaulting to the correct location, which is my user folder, music, audio music apps, patches, and then the audio subfolder. So let's name it. Beautiful. Now, it has the name here, which isn't necessarily what I want, but this is just the first stage of it. And I'm going to do the same thing for my instrument channel strips. I like outputting it to the same master bus. They'll all get routed to subgroups, but this is just a starting point. And then send to the comfort reverb for while I'm working to dial some in quickly. And then my two headphone mixes. These are two buses that send to my headphones. And I'll snap them to Unity Gain. And I can even call up an instrument here. But I'll just leave it like this as is. And here I'm going to save and name this one. And here it's the same directory, but the instrument subfolder. And you'll notice I just called it software instrument like that for short. And I'll show you why in a moment. So now under... Here, I'm going to go define as default for new software instruments. And for this one, for the audio track, I'm going to choose this one as the default as well. Now, when I'm in the new tracks window, I can go load default patch, and it's going to load that. And for software instruments, we don't have that here, but we have the option to load a default patch. And that's what I defined there. And the reason I named it the way I did is because that name is going to be used. So, for example, let me create a new software instrument. We'll see that it's created it the way I want, except the output is still routed to the stereo output by default. And that's because in this new tracks dialog box for the instruments, we need to set the output here. This is what it's going to adopt when we create the new instrument. So as long as I have that set there and I go create, it'll load the default patch with the correct routing. There, we see that now. And then it's the same thing for new audio channel strips. I need to set the output here and it'll adopt it from here. So if I go create, now I'm getting my new audio channel strip with the routing I like and that. So let me just delete all these. I got to leave the top one. But now I can use the shortcuts for creating them without that new tracks window. I'm going to go command option A for new audio track. And there's my new audio track with the right routing and all the setup I want and that nice default name. And then option command S for my new software instrument with everything that I want. And it's got that default patch name. Now, the next two features, I'm going to hide the library for the moment, are kind of tied together. Let me just call up an instrument. I'm going to call it the Vintage Electric Piano. And what they are, are Capture's Recording and Smart Quantize. So Capture's Recording, what that means is, let's say I have the transport and play, I'm noodling around, and I want to capture what I've done, even though I'm not in record mode, I can use the Capture's Recording command, and the default shortcut is Shift-R, but we can also customize the transport bar here to show it. We have the Capture's Recording button, and there it's that button that's just been added. So you can use the button if you prefer that. And then 
tied to that, although they don't have to be tied together, but I think of them as being tied together. I always set my default quantization level to something like 16th notes. I like 16B actually with a little bit of swing. And then smart quantize, which is the alternative to classic quantize. So classic quantize, as we know, will just round everything off to the grid division that we have defined here. Smart quantize is kind of an intelligent algorithm that takes the notes closest to the grid and kind of leaves them a little bit away from the grid. But the ones that are farther away, if they're too far away, it leaves them alone. If they're far away, but out of time, it'll pull them closer. It just sort of intelligently interprets what you're doing. And I find it really, really good. So let's say I'm going to play a bit with the metronome on. All right, I'm going to stop and hit Shift R to capture my recording. And there it is. And let's listen with the click. All right, and if we look at the event list, we'll see that it's not all one, 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 one. It's preserved some of the natural timing away from the grid. Some of these are a couple of ticks before, a couple after. Sounds good, but it's preserved some of the human timing. And if I switch to classic quantize, there they're all lined up. So that's one example. Let me show you another one, a little more nuanced. I'm going to play something similar and I'll add in some kind of rolling triplets that are really off the grid. All right, shift R, and let's listen to that with smart quantize. So the notes that I've intended to be on the beat, it's played and preserved their timing. We see those little discrepancies around one. And the triplets, it's left alone. It sounds very natural. And if I switch to quantizing off, we'll see all the notes shift and everything's going to be a lot sloppier. And if I switch it back on, I'm going to go to 16B again. We're still in smart quantize. We see it snaps those notes that are intended to be closer. And if I go to classic quantize, it's going to sound pretty bad. So it's completely lost the feel of what I'm doing. So smart quantize to bring what's intended to be at the grid closer, but preserving some of the distance. And what's off the grid, it kind of leaves it alone. So those are my three favorite features, defining default channel strip types, using capture as recording so I don't need to be in record. And I like that because often I'll try a dozen takes and it's only the last one that's good. So I really don't need to be recording and deleting, recording and deleting. I just need to capture the last one. So I can just leave it in play mode and capture what I need. So captures recording and then smart quantize for intelligently quantizing just the right amount. This is Eli Kranzberg for Logic Pro Expert.